Peter Boyle was a famous actor who starred in movies like Young Frankenstein and Taxi Driver. He was also known for his role as the dad in Everybody Loves Raymond. His acting left a lasting impression on people all over the world. Whether you remember him as the monster in Young Frankenstein or from his other roles, Boyle's talent was clear. What's your favorite memory of him? Share your stories below. And don't forget to watch the video for more about his life and career. In the world of entertainment, there are some people who leave a lasting impression long after they're gone. One such individual made a big difference in the movie industry. With his memorable acting and unique style, he changed the way people thought about movies. He didn't just play characters, he brought them to life in a way that stuck with audiences. His influence is still felt today, inspiring new actors and filmmakers. He was known for playing all sorts of characters convincingly, whether they were heroes or villains. Directors and other actors admired his dedication to his craft, saying he made every project better just by being a part of it. The effects of his work are still felt in Hollywood, where people look up to him as a role model. His willingness to take on challenging roles and push boundaries set a standard that others still strive to meet. His performances continue to captivate audiences, reminding us of the power of storytelling. In the story of Hollywood's growth, he's an important figure who showed us what movies could be. His influence is like a bright light guiding those who want to make a difference in the industry. Through his passion and dedication, he made a mark that will be remembered for years to come. And so, as we think about the impact of this remarkable person, we're reminded that movies aren't just entertainment, they're an experience that can change how we see the world. His spirit lives on in the hearts of those who love movies and storytelling. In 1990, he suffered a near-fatal stroke that left him speechless and immobile for six months. Then, during the filming of Everybody Loves Raymond in 1999, he had a heart attack. After a quick recovery, he returned to the series. Although he initially turned down the role of Cornelius Vanderbilt in Walker, he later accepted it and volunteered to do the film free of charge. After attending a screening of Joe, he was disturbed by the audience's reaction and refused lead roles in films he felt glamorized violence. Instead, he focused on supporting roles and delved into comedy, becoming known for Young Frankenstein and Everybody Loves Raymond. In the 1980s, there were rumors about Peter Boyle possibly appearing in a sequel to Joe. The sequel, Citizen Joe, was supposed to follow Joe as he tried to rebuild his life after spending 10 years in prison. It would also address his grown-up kids, who held more liberal beliefs. Canon Films periodically advertise unmade sequels to Joe. In 1980, Canon promised Joe Roman II. Then, in 1985, they announced the coming of Citizen Joe, the man has changed, but the times have not. He's back. However, the film never materialized. He received a special tribute at the 79th Annual Academy Awards in 27 as part of the annual memorial tribute. In Young Frankenstein, he portrayed the monster. Gene Wilder, Peter Boyle, and Marty Feldman appeared in the film because their mutual agent had a deal with the movie studio. In the world of entertainment, few actors have left such a lasting impact as Peter Boyle. His performances in various movies and TV shows have become memorable moments in cinematic and television history. One of his unforgettable roles was as the monster in Mel Brooks' Young Frankenstein. In this classic comedy, he brought humor and charm to the iconic character, especially in the famous tap dance scene set to Putting on the Ritz. Later, in Martin Scorsese's Taxi Driver, Boyle portrayed Wizard, a seasoned cabbie, adding depth to the film's portrayal of urban life. Despite his brief appearance, Boyle's performance resonated strongly with audiences. Transitioning to television, Boyle's versatility was showcased in Everybody Loves Raymond, where he played Frank Barone, the gruff yet lovable father. His deadpan delivery and candid expressions brought laughter to millions of viewers. Through his roles in both movies and TV shows, Boyle became a beloved figure in the world of entertainment, leaving a lasting impact on audiences everywhere. Studying drama at Herbert Berghoff HB Studio in Greenwich Village, New York City, he honed his acting skills. His wife, Lorraine Alterman Boyle, then a reporter for Rolling Stone magazine, first encountered him in full makeup for Young Frankenstein. Through her friendship with Yoko Ono, he forged a close bond with ex-Beatle John Lennon, who later served as best man at their wedding. Their first child, Lucy, arrived just two days after Lennon's tragic murder in 1980. In Hardcore, he portrayed Andy Mast, a role that showcased his talent alongside George C. Scott, who coincidentally shared his birthday on October 18th, despite being born in different years. In the late 1960s, a talented trio of performers graced the stages of Greenwich Village Hillies on the Bowery. 
This venue, led by Hilly Crystal, later known for CBGBS, hosted improv shows featuring Peter Boyle, Trenko, and Judd Hirsch. After gaining recognition for his role in Joe, Peter Boyle made a significant decision. Despite being offered the lead role in The French Connection and other parts that glorified violence, he opted for projects that resonated more with his values. In the film Hardcore, he portrayed private investigator Andy Mast. Mast's weekly fee amounted to a minimum of $750, covering additional expenses like travel. These snippets provide insight into Peter Boyle's journey from improv stages to principal choices and roles, culminating in a notable portrayal in Hardcore. They offer a glimpse into his diverse experiences in the entertainment world. In the film Young Frankenstein, he played the iconic role of the monster. During the putting on the Ritz scene, he improvised the memorable line, adding his unique touch to the character. Another scene, known as the blind man scene, presented challenges. Despite having hot soup poured on him and his thumb lit on fire, he stayed safe with a hot pad and a fake thumb soaked in alcohol. In The Friends of Eddie Coyle, his portrayal of Dylan showcased his talent. In one scene, where he struggled with pouring a glass of tap beer, the director ensured a pre-filled glass was ready below the camera line, allowing him to seamlessly switch glasses. Peter Boyle's dedication and adaptability made him a standout in both roles, adding depth and authenticity to his characters. Imagine a person who traveled a lot between Los Angeles and New York City for work. They acted in a famous TV show and also appeared in a classic movie where they played a monster. This person was known for being friendly and funny both on and off screen. They liked to eat interesting foods with their co-stars during breaks from filming. Even though they were a big star, they stayed true to where they came from and kept their sense of humor. This person's work continues to inspire people, showing how powerful storytelling can be. In Steel Yard Blues, Peter Boyle secured the third billing, portraying Eagle Thornberry. Despite not grabbing the top spot, his presence alongside Jane Fonda and Donald Sutherland showcased his standing in the film. During the entire nine-season run of Everybody Loves Raymond, he faced a unique challenge. The New York-based Boyle regularly commuted to Los Angeles, maintaining family ties as his daughters, Lucy and Amy, attended school in their hometown. This commitment highlights his dedication to both his craft and his family. In his personal life, Peter Boyle shared a friendship with Doris Roberts, a connection that extended beyond the screen. The camaraderie between them added another layer to the relationships within the Everybody Loves Raymond cast, emphasizing the genuine connections forged off-camera.